Chapter One, Andy Meets a Sprite. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Andy. She was single, 56 years old, and lived a normal life, working as an administrative assistant in a Fortune 500 company. She had a tidy sum in her 401k. Her phone skills were exemplary, but nothing exciting ever happened to Andy, and she liked it that way. Andy had been working all week, and this was finally Friday morning. She was tired. She decided to go for a brisk walk in the half hour before she had to leave for work. It was a cloudy day. It had been cloudy every day for what seemed like weeks, but it was warming up, and yes, a walk sounded good. She pulled her long brown hair into a bun, threw on some sneakers, and zipped up her favorite red sweatshirt. She walked down the block, stopping for a moment to pet Gracie, the sweet yellow cat with the green eyes and matching collar who lived next door. As Andy kept walking, Gracie sat at the curb and howled for her to come back. I'll be back in about 20 minutes, Andy told Gracie. You hang out and wait. I'm going for a little walk. When I get back, I'll give you a treat. Gracie responded by falling into the gutter and rolling around, which was her way of scratching her own back. Andy walked to the end of the block where the woods began. The cool darkness of the trees felt inviting, even on a chilly morning. But she knew she had to get to work, so reluctantly, she turned around and began to head home. She happened to glance down as she did this and noticed something glinting from the ground, even on this cloudy day. She bent down and pushed aside the bit of moss that was covering it. How beautiful, a clear white crystal. Someone must have lost it. She held the crystal in her hand to admire it. The sun suddenly peached through the clouds and the crystal became brighter and even clearer. Andy felt a strong wind coming from her right. It made her turn and as she did, she gasped. She saw a purple pathway that had not been there before leading into the woods. She glanced at the crystal, which, although it was still clear, had taken on a purple cast. She couldn't be sure whether it was from the reflection of the path or whether the crystal had actually turned purple on its own. She stood there unsure of what to do when a purple dragonfly wafted by on the wind. Come with me, said the dragonfly. And Andy saw that it wasn't a dragonfly at all. It was like a small child with purple hair, a pointy purple hat, a purple dress, bare feet, and purple wings. Andy, who was a sensible 56-year-old woman and who did not believe in things that weren't real, froze, staring at this creature. I'm a sprite, said the creature, and then looking at the crystal, grew excited. Oh, good, you found it. Come with me, quickly. I, I, I have to get to work, said Andy, who didn't know how to respond in any other way but the truth. This is your work, said the sprite in disgust. Come, you found the magic crystal. We need to bring it back to the purple earth. Andy just stood there in that old sweatshirt, the wind making her hair come loose from its tidy bun. Why had she not put in a few extra pins to hold it up? The sprite noticed this. You need to let your hair down anyway where we're going, she said. Now, follow me down the steps. My name, by the way, is Jet. Andy responded automatically and politely. I'm Andy. Nice to meet you. Jet said, choose a number. For what? asked Andy. Jet looked disgusted. For the number you need. Need for what? Andy asked. Well, it all depends on how big your head is, Jet said. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Andy felt for her tape measure in the pocket of her sweatshirt. Um, mine is 20 inches, said Andy, measuring her head around just above the eyebrows. Well, then the answer is obvious, said Jet. Multiply five times your number, then round to the nearest multiple of eight, and that's the magic number of steps you take. Andy was feeling stressed now. She felt thrown not only because she was talking to a purple sprite, but also because she really did need to get to work. She was the type of woman who was always on time and always did what she promised she would do. And one of those things was to go to work on a work day. I have to get to work, Jet. I, I don't have time to take a hundred steps in the wrong direction. Oh, that's the right direction. And it's 104 steps for you, said Jet, rolling her eyes. A hundred isn't a multiple of eight. Andy followed Jet down the stairs, feeling not only mathematically challenged, but also helpless. She knew she should go to work. But the truth of the matter is that if you're out for a morning walk and you find a magic crystal and a woodland sprite comes to lead you on a path of purple that suddenly opens up into the woods, the truth of the matter is that under these circumstances, you have to take the stairs. And so Andy did. She didn't like it. She didn't want to be late for work or who knows, to miss work altogether that day. But, well, the purple magic seemed to be winning out. <laughs> Wonder what happens next. What steps will Andy need to take? Will we get to see more of Jet? I hope you join me for chapter two. Thanks. <laughs>